Hello and welcome to my channel. It's an absolutely beautiful day outside. I'm sorry if you can hear wearing in the background. My neighbour's jet washing or something. <laughs> Um, hopefully it doesn't pick up on the video. Anyway, today I'm going to be showing you how to write italic handwritten or hand painted fonts onto a cake. I know you can buy the templates to do this, which are absolutely brilliant and I've got nothing against those whatsoever. I personally just like to do it by hand, like the personal touch it gives. And once you've done it quite a few times, it's actually it's quite quick. So the type of calligraphy that I'm going to be showing you isn't really calligraphy, really, strictly speaking. I'm not a calligraphy artist. This is just something I've learned how to do by trial and error because I basically learned all the things that I do um, on my cakes from YouTube and um, I couldn't really find anything on this. So I literally just had to wing it. And um, so I thought I'll make a video so it can help somebody else if you're wanting to do it by yourself and you're not wanting to fork out for the templates now the sort of calligraphy I'm going to be doing more of a freehand italic font the sort of thing that you might find on Pinterest that you see around a lot at the moment really it's not that difficult because basically I cheat and so I'm going to show you how I do that. Enjoy the video. You will need a brown edible felt tip pen. Now this one's by Glitter Bliss in the shade Choco. You're going to need various size brushes. I would go from a sort of medium thin to a thin to a very, very fine brush. This is the finest one I had, but you can, if you have finer, that's probably even better to be honest. Then you're going to need some edible gold paint or luster of your choice. I like to use a cheap vodka to mix with my gold paint. Um, I prefer this to rejuvenating spirit because I just find the rejuvenators just evaporate too quickly. Um, you're having to constantly top up your pot of gold and it's really expensive whereas the vodka still dries quite quickly but you're not having to constantly top it up every like 30 seconds or two minutes or whatever it is. So just mix that in there until you get a nice smooth consistency, a little bit thick but not clumpy. I find it really helpful to have a reference for this so I just look up handwritten font on Google and just find an image that I like. I'm not going to try and emulate that exactly um, because it's probably not going to turn out exactly like that but I think it's really really helpful just to remind you how the lettering works. There is a really simple formula for this and I'm just going to show you on just an icing sheet here um, how to do this. By all means, practice this on a piece of baking paper or even just plain paper before you have a go on cakes. And all it is, is on the upstroke, you are going to do a thin stroke. So just a light touch with your brush. I'll show you that here. And on the down stroke, you're going to push harder so you get a thicker stroke. I'll just show you that a few times just so you can get the idea. Just by applying a little more pressure on the downward stroke, you're causing the brush to flare out and give a thicker line. Now let's apply that to some actual lettering. Take your time here and you'll notice I pause for a minute there as I just look at my reference just to keep in mind what kind of effect I'm trying to get with this. Now while you can paint like this straight onto a cake, 
obviously it's going to leave you a wider margin for error. So if you're a bit nervous about this and you just want to get it right, then I would recommend you have a go at this. On a piece of baking parchment, take your edible pen and write out the lettering that you would like to put onto the cake, taking into account the size. Now you're going to want to space this out a little more than you would expect because these letter letters are going to be thickened later on. So I'm just going over that just so you can see it a bit better. It didn't come out very strong on the first go. So I'm just following my guide to see what shape the letters should be. And as you can see, it doesn't look particularly remarkable or anything at the moment. Don't worry about this. It, it's all going to come together, trust me. I'm going to place that parchment over the cake and secure it with a couple of pins. I'm actually using acupuncture pin, pins because they are so tiny you are just not going to see those holes. So pin this onto the fondant on your cake and then take your pen again and you're going to go over the writing on the baking parchment and this will leave a small indentation on the icing. I do recommend that you leave your cake after it's been iced for a few hours to let the icing set and harden a little, you'll get a better finish. If the icing is still very soft, sometimes when you paint the lettering on, it sort of just becomes quite messy. So it's better to have a little bit of a crust on there. This icing that I used was really quite dry. It was almost solid because it's just a cake dummy I've got under there and I iced it a couple of days before. So unfortunately when I lift this up, you're not gonna see much of an indentation, but there was just enough there. So if I remove this here, you you can't see that, but there was, <laughs> there, I promise there was an indentation there and you will see there is one. And what you're going to do is just take your pen and just follow the indentation and it's just a guide for you to draw out your letters. Again, this will just make sure that you have placed the lettering exactly where you want it to be. There's always a danger if you write your letter straight onto the cake, you're going to get the placement slightly wrong or it's going to come out on a slant that you didn't want or just little mistakes that can just absolutely wreck it and then you have to wipe them off and you're possibly going to spoil your beautiful icing so I always recommend that you just use a guide. Now all you need to do is thicken the letters wherever there would be a downstroke. This is where the guide comes in handy again just to remind yourself of where those thick downstrokes ought to be. So you can take your time with this, but I'm just going to speed through this part so we can get on to the next bit. I'm just going to fill in all those thicker spaces just to really give me a better guide and I just feel like it gives me a nicer base to work with. You're going to need to paint over this two, maybe three or even four times to get this looking really thick and really good finish. So just be patient. So the first thing I'm doing is filling in the thicker downstroke areas with my medium thin brush. And so it's not gonna look perfect straight away, do not panic. You're gonna get this looking perfect by the end of it, don't worry. So as you can see, I'm just filling in all those thicker parts there. And then I'm going over with a second coat and you can see now it's starting to look a lot fuller and just a lot richer and giving a much better finish. Now it's time to take the thinner, finer brush and fill in all those upstrokes. You need to have a very steady hand. By all means, use your other hand to help steady the hand you're painting with. And I'm just going along and trying to fill in any gaps I've left at the same time. I actually hardly used the medium sized brush in the end, but it is useful just to have it there just in case you find you need it. If you do accidentally overload your brush, just quickly drag that drip up and spread the paint across the lettering before it falls out of the lines of the lettering. Just be really, really quick and you'll be fine. Yeah. 
is worth just spending a little time making sure you filled in over all of the felt tip. You don't have any of that showing through. And sometimes it's nice just to add on a little flick and a curl here and there. Um, just go over any areas that you feel need thickening, smoothing down any areas and just get it looking really crisp and really neat. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thank you, bye. Behind